Welcome back, everyone. I'm Sarah Peck, and this is the Startup Pregnant Podcast. Join us. I have an adventure we're going on for the next 90 days, and I would love to invite you to shake off the cobwebs, take a look back at 2019 and how it has gone so far for you, and then think about the next 90 days. It's something I'm doing personally and uh, sharing about on the podcast. So if you need a little boost of motivation or you have a project that you really want to finish in 2019, take a listen and come join us. Welcome to the Startup Pregnant Podcast, where we talk to creative leaders about what it means to be an entrepreneur and a parent. I'm your host, Sarah K. Peck. So we have 90 days left. This episode is airing on October 1st, 2019, and it is the start of the fourth quarter of the year. I am a huge fan of the quarters of the year because I think, especially as an entrepreneur, taking 90 days to think about what you want to accomplish and what your goals are and where you're heading, this is a really great amount of time. It lets you sink your teeth into a project and really test it and iterate and build something, like take a real step forward or a couple of steps forward forward, but you don't get a whole year bogged down and realize that you really went in the wrong direction or there isn't enough need or demand for what you're doing or that you realize that you're in over your head or whatever number of things that come up if we only measure progress in year-long increments. 90 days is a really magical amount of time, and so I plan a lot of my life and my business structure around quarters. I also think it's just almost amazing that pregnancy can be divided into the first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester, each of which are about 90 days. And you can look at how much changes energetically and infrastructurally and in your capabilities in each of those periods. The first trimester is exhausting for most people, can come with like nausea and food aversions and just debilitating fatigue. And you can feel like you are, you have to really ratchet it back down for a bit and get to bed early. But then the second trimester, you can get a little bit of a resurgence of energy. And also you look pregnant for the most part. Of course, everybody's body is different. Everybody's energy is different. Not everyone feels sick in the first trimester and not everyone feels great in the second trimester. But for the most part, you can get a general assumption of what the next 90 days are going to look like and plan accordingly. The same is true for life events. We know in the fall, kids go back to school or the holidays are coming up. So this particular quarter is one of my favorites, but it goes by quickly. Just a heads up, when you think about planning for Q4, remember, there are a lot of holidays, especially if you live in the United States, there tends to be a Thanksgiving week, there's like, sometimes there's fall break for different school systems, and then the end of the year comes up really fast, and there's uh, a lot of kids have two weeks or three weeks of time off around the December holiday. So if you really look at it, it's not a complete 90 days or 13 weeks, but It's more like 10 weeks max. Add into that the fact that you'll probably do a lot of year-end planning and accounting and financials and closing out the books plus planning ahead for the new year, and you might even shorten it down to an eight-week window. However you organize your time, it's just a fun time because there's also a resurgence of energy in the fall. Like people get excited to go back to work or to like finish something. There's a sense of completion about closing out the calendar year or like making something happen by the end of the year. So I want to capitalize on that energy and just issue you a call or an invitation to join us. Think about something that you wanted to do in 2019, something that you wanted to accomplish or achieve or be a part of. Maybe you wanted to, one of your New Year's resolutions was to get back into an exercise program. That for me is like a constant theme because I get back into a rhythm and I spend time bicycling or I go to a new weightlifting program. And then invariably summer comes, we go on vacation, I slip off, I'm working on something else. And then I realize, oh, I want to get back in the gym habit again. Maybe you want to work on a writing project and you know that for those of you who are writers and know NaNoWriMo, the National Novel Writing Month that happens in November, you want to spend this fall like getting your first 40, 50, 60,000 words just onto the paper and you want to write a thousand words a day for 90 days. I mean, that's 90,000 words. Between now and Christmas, if you write every weekday, 
a thousand words every weekday between now and the third week of December, you can get 55,000 words on whatever it is that your heart has you wanting to write. So this is an invitation. Take the time when you're listening to this podcast and think, okay, what is it that would make a significant move or difference in my life if I did it and it was done by the time I finished the year? Maybe it's something as boring as you know, like doing your books and your accounting and knowing that you're ready for tax season, but secretly that would make you tremendously happy because you'd know your budget for the upcoming year. Or maybe it's that you want to paint all the rooms in your house because that's been a project that's been itching at you. You see where I'm going with this. There are a lot of projects you can do. It might even be that you want to, you signed up for a program at the beginning of the year. This is what happened to me last year, actually. I signed up for B-School at the beginning of the year, but I didn't end up doing most of the program until the fall. It just, it, the timing didn't work. The spring was too busy. I had back-to-back -back interviews booked for the podcast. I was prepping for my maternity leave, but then I got onto my maternity leave and I really wanted to, I just wanted to watch stuff, but I didn't, for some reason, I didn't want to watch Netflix. For what it's worth, my first maternity leave, all I did was watch Veep. I like discovered Veep and thought it was amazing. And I just watched, I think I binge watched like five seasons of it. But for my second maternity leave, I didn't feel like watching Netflix and I wanted just a small amount of stimulation in my brain. So I ended up watching, like binge watching the Marie Forleo B-School program. There's six modules and really snappy, well done videos. And I'd watch like a video and then I'd think a little bit about my business, but I wouldn't actually be implementing because the implementation can be, the execution can be the really exhausting part. And I just let myself think, which was awesome. So that's what I did. Is that only a year ago? Yeah, that's what I did last year in the fall. I also want to add a caveat here that it doesn't have to be achievement or productivity focused as well. Sometimes when I'm talking to dear friends, especially people who are new moms or when I'm working with clients that are in the first year or two postpartum and they tell me, you know, I just feel like I have zero energy. I feel completely obliterated. I'm so tired. I haven't slept in two years. And we talk about sleep and we realize that, you know, their toddler is still getting up in the middle of the night or they're being woken up or there's broken or intermittent sleep. Like sometimes the thing that we need to do for 90 days is just sleep. Like sometimes sleep can become the most important project. And the dreariness of feeling like I'm not finishing anything or I'm not able to think straight or I like I just want to maintain my status quo or I don't have the energy right now. Sometimes that's solved by saying, hey, this next quarter needs to be really boring. And what I am going to do is go to bed at 8.30 every night and whatever it is, like ask my partner to do every other night or finally commit to sleep training because I'm like my eyes are, I want to scratch them out from the inside or I just need to weather this a little bit longer. Like that is also admirable and audacious and <laughs> challenging at the next level because sometimes that can be the hardest thing to do is to prioritize sleep, to say no to everything that comes your way. So if your project for the next 90 days is like, listen, Sarah, I don't want to do or make anything else, but what I want to do is I just want to sleep and I want to say no to everything for 90 days, like you get a, like a standing ovation for me if that's where you are at this particular quarter. So whatever it is for you, maybe you want to go through the whole Google Analytics program. Pick one thing that you really want to get done over the next 90 days and we can journey through this together. I am taking a small break from this podcast. If you listened to the last episode, you know that I am on hiatus from producing massive episodes, and I am just checking in once in a while to update you on my progress, because the thing that I'm focused on this fall is creating mini books for Startup Pregnant. We've got a whole host of ideas, and my goal, my tentative goal, like even if it takes me 90 days to get one done, then I know my pace, how long it takes to write. But I think I'm setting a reasonable goal when I say I want to get two things done. I want to get two mini books done. I know the titles. For some reason, I don't want to tell you them yet. So maybe that'll be on my next update. But I'm working on these two mini books and we want to publish them by the end of the year. And I am going to keep you posted on how it's going through accountability on this podcast. If you are in our Startup Pregnant Facebook group, our community group, you want to join and post what you are working on the next 90 days, please feel free to use each other as accountability. And I look forward to seeing what you are working on and keeping you posted about our progress. So enjoy. What are you going to do over the next 90 days? 
What will you do to make 2019 end well for you? Hey everyone, just a heads up and a reminder, if you want to listen to our long form Ask Me Anything sessions, they are 30, 45, and sometimes 60 minutes in length, and they we go deep into questions that people have. If you want me to look at your business, you want me to comment on your marketing plan, or you have a question about parenting, pregnancy, or anything in between, we are taking listener questions and I answer them in a monthly Ask Me Anything fireside chat. It's available only to our Patreon supporters. So if you back us at the $7 a month level, you get access to this private podcast. You can get access to all of the past episodes, which is pretty cool. So if you're missing the podcast while we're on our hiatus and you want to take a listen in to these Ask Me Anything episodes, go over to Patreon and become a monthly backer at the $7 per month level and you'll get access to all of the future episodes, as well as all of the past episodes. Keep in mind that you are also supporting the work of Startup Pregnant and our growth in these early days, and that matters a ton. Every dollar helps and counts, and we appreciate so much and are grateful for your support. Patreon.com slash Startup Pregnant will take you right there. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Did I spell that right? Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Yes. Patreon.com slash Startup Pregnant will take you there. The link will be right here in the show notes. You can go straight there. $7 a month and you get access to this entirely exclusive Patreon only podcast. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening. And, you know, I always say this and I mean it. Leave us a review on iTunes if you like our show. It takes a few seconds and it really does help us a lot. If you want more of what we're talking about, go over to startuppregnant.com and get on our email list. We send out a weekly newsletter with time-saving tips for parents and entrepreneurs. And I always include a weekly gadget or tool or something awesome that we've stumbled upon to help make your life just a little bit easier. And as always, you can reach out to us at hello at startuppregnant.com. We love hearing from you.